Yo, what's up guys? Hope you're all doing well. Today we have what is probably my best game to date in the attack chart. This right here is pretty much as good as it gets for VF4. Just rocking the JDAMs on Parasol Storm, bombing absolutely everything the enemy threw at us. Real quick, before we get into the video, I just want to address a few really common questions I've been getting lately. So firstly, here are all my VF4 settings. I play at 1600 DPI. Feel free to pause and copy whenever. As you can see there, I fly with mouse and keyboard, a lot of people ask that as well. I don't use a joystick or anything too fancy, I just find that the mouse and keyboard when mastered gives really really precise and smooth control, so... I know a lot of really good pilots, almost all of them use mouse and keyboard, so... There's, there's a big misconception there, a lot of people ask me, oh you, you joystick abuser, it's not, it's not the case at all. The mouse and keyboard is the way to go. And if you have any other questions though, just leave a comment or come talk to me on my live stream. that's probably the best way to do it, because I'm streaming 3 days a week right now. And if you come in there and drop a question, I'll just answer it within two seconds. So, you know, check the link in the description if that interests you. Aside from all that, I just want to thank you all again. The support lately has been just absolutely insane. And we're going to keep going all throughout BF6. So if you want to hit the ground running in that game, with, you know, the best settings, tips and tricks, all that stuff, go ahead and hit subscribe. It's not going to cost you anything. And my end of year goal was actually 25k, but that's looking really, really close. And I think we're going to, I think we're going to beat that pretty easily. Anyways, let's get right into the commentary. So if you notice here, I'm just going for this boat, and one thing I'll do is I won't really go for the boats that are super close to the spawn. Uh, the reason being for that is that the AA there will just absolutely laser you if you get too close, so... Yeah, especially in the bigger jets like the A-10 and even the Su-25, you'll get punished for that really hard. In the Fantan, you can get away with a lot, but it doesn't mean you should, you know, try to do that. Now here, what I like doing a lot is... When a Stinger shoots at me, I use my rear cam to see where he is, and then I turn right back around on him and then bomb him. <laughs> I do that a lot, but unfortunately there's an AA mine there. I'm going to get hit with that, so unfortunate kind of placement of that AA mine, but we're all good. Now I'm just going to come back and get revenge on these Stinger guys. I've spotted him up. I see that guy, he shoots a Stinger at my friendly jet, I think, but it's too late for him, and we get him and his mate. I do think there are more on the island, though, so got to be careful, and yeah, sure enough, we're getting locked back up from there. That's going to be a common theme of this video. Those guys on the island are really annoying. But, luckily, you know, you can just ignore them and you can go far on the other side of the map, which is something I like doing as well. So right here we're spotting that there's an AA. And one trick I like doing is going upside down and launching a JDAM, you know, kind of when I'm, my, my jet's upside down, which gives it a lot of time to fly in. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just spazzing out and hitting the wrong keys. And I thought he was dead there. So my JDAM hit, but they were out repairing it. And they actually managed to repair it all the way up. Uh, because I know they're repairing. I was going to come back and hit it again, but I just couldn't see it, so... I'm going to go hit this boat. Rough angle for the JDAM. I've hit that one before, that exact kind of line-up with the JDAM, but... A little bit of rust. We're not going to be hitting it this early in the gameplay, but this is one of those matches where if you keep watching it, uh, it gets better and better and better. <laughs> oh my god, my voice crack. Anyways, I won't edit that out. You guys can have a laugh at that. I do have a cold right now. That's my excuse. But we're going to go back for this AA, and he has two repairers on him, so... We do like 90 damage and he still survives it. So I'm just going to turn right back around. I call it an ego strafe sometimes. Like when you're just going head on with something that should kill you and you just don't care. Like you, you know you're mechanically better. So you get the kills. And that was three kills off an AA. So they really had a lot of repairs on that. There's chemtrails if you see in the chat. He's actually my wingman in this game. And those with keen kind of eyes and memory will remember that he was the guy we were flying against in the last BF4 video. Anyways, he's my wingman in this game, and he does a fantastic job, so shout out Chemtrails, you did a really good job, man. Appreciate the wingmanning. But anyways, he, he let us know that we had the AA had two reps, so I knew what I was going into there. A good wingman not only will do their job, but they also, you know, they provide feedback in the chat to what they're doing. I know, like, almost everyone who flies stealth jet wingman a lot for, like, good attack jet parts, and all of this too is like, if I'm hitting the AA, I'll just say A minus 30 for like a 30 hit, A minus 60 if I hit it twice, you know, it helps the attack jet know when it can go in and make the most of it, so that's a really big tip for you stealth jet pilots out there, or if you want to fly stealth for friends, make sure that they know what kind of damage you're doing to different things, mainly the AA though, the AA is the main one you want to kind of watch out for, this AA blows his APS way too early, so I commit to the strafe, and I try to get a JDM on him, unfortunately it didn't hit, I'm not sure what happened there. Anyways, we're going to come back around on him. I know he has no APS, and he's actually shooting at chemtrails right now, so this is the perfect timing for me to come in and gun him down. So, as you can see, light work of that AA. Infantry next to him. It's an easy kill as well. 
Now we're gonna look down towards there's a boat at A. That's probably a good target, but there's also a boat coming down the middle. It doesn't matter which one I choose, as long as I choose one of them. And at this point, this boat, I think he bails, so I don't really focus him too hard. I'd rather let him, you know, populate back up. As soon as I notice there's no one in it, I'll let him, you know, rep it up. So hopefully he can fill it up with like two or three people, and then it can be a big like, amount of kills. Anyways, I don't think he does that really. So I go for the kill here. My JDAM wasn't loaded in the APS, so no point in dropping it there. We're actually just going to go for the other boat. I've seen that he's got hit by a TV or something. That's what that smoke usually means. Basically, he's been hit by some pretty heavy weapons. So I go for him instead. And that's, uh, that's a better choice. Now I'm going to stealth shit on my 6. I mean, I'm not really going to go hard on this dogfight because there's so many stingers and they have B. Dogfighting over B would just be a bad idea there. Probably just going to get AA'd, so... I retreat back to base. Chemtrails is dead. I'm going to wait for my wingman to come up or for the jet to bring the fight to me, which is exactly what he does, and this is what I want to happen comes over to me, I can deal with him over our base easily. So some nicely placed shots, well some of them are nicely placed, and we get him gunned down pretty quick. I'm actually not running, um, not running belt feeder this game, so my loadout this game is going to be ECM jammer, stealth coding, and JDAMs. Those are the selectable changes that I've made in my jet. And yeah, I, I don't get as much time to shoot, you have to burst it a lot more with the stealth coding. But the benefit to it is that with the JDAMs, you've got plenty of firepower, right? You don't need that much more firepower than, you know, a bunch of stealth coding rounds, which you get a little bit less with the stealth coding compared to the belt feeder. But that plus the JDAM, you can kill anything. So I'm not worried about that. I'd rather have the stealth coding because it allows me to escape from Iglers really easily. And it allows me to, you know, get some extra breathing room against heat seekers, stingers, all that lock-on stuff. Basically, this game, I looked at the scoreboard at the start of the match and I thought... I don't think there's anyone that's going to be tryharding me in the stealth jet or in the AA, like with the cannons. It's just going to be lock-ons, so I might as well prepare myself for it, and that's what, exactly what I did. And that's the kind of thing I love about Battlefield 4. The loadouts are really dynamic. This game, I could have said that, you know, if they didn't have the AA for most of this game, I could have went for the Hydra rockets, and that would have been a better choice, but since they're having the AA a lot this game, and I'm having to deal with it all the time, I'm using the JDAMs, and I don't regret it at all. And I think, to be honest... The JDAMs are the best way to go. If you were going to one-trick either the Hydras or the JDAMs, you should one-trick the JDAMs because that way you can always deal with the AA when it comes up. And with, with really good cannon aim, you can actually get really high KPM with the JDAMs as well. It just requires a bit more skill on the guns. But as you can see in this game, I start to warm up towards the end, or towards the middle really, and the JDAMs become absolutely lethal when paired with the cannons. And just the cannons in general, like, you don't need the secondary weapon if you're good with the cannons. You can get two kills per strafe sometimes with those. Anyways, you know, I'm just timing out the uh, the APS of that AA. I know when I can go in and kill him. Basically just time that out. Go shoot him when he doesn't have an APS. Commit to the strafe. That's all you need to do. Now I see this, this boat. I'm kind of hesitating a little bit because he's a bit too close to his base for me to get out of there without getting hit by the AA. But also this rib boat. Rib boats can do a lot of damage when you pair them with the base AA, so make sure to kill that. And a little tip when you go for rib boats, I'll point it out next time I do it, but you want to shoot at the front of the rib boat because that will shoot out the gunner. The, the quicker you can get the gunner out the rib boat, the quicker you're going to be facing a harmless little boat compared to the, the -da 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 rib boat that, you know, can kill you sometimes. Very rare, but you'll actually see in like scrims and stuff or in comp. People do use rib boats against like helis and stuff. They're quite strong when they aim well. Very disposable, but decent. They're, they're not bad vehicles. Anyways, we're going to go for this boat right here. If I had a dollar every time I got TV by a boat that I left for too long in the spawn, I'd be a very rich man. So I've learned to just get rid of those whenever I do. I can see them there. And we saw the transport head over here, so I'm just going to go chase that up. Shoot down the two parachuters. Super satisfying to do that. Um... When you get good at shooting parachuters, it's, it's just one of the more satisfying things in this game for some reason. I don't even know why. It's just like, you don't even give them a chance. It's so brutal. It's a good kill. And we see there's a couple more on this flag, so I'm going to come back around and try to catch them out. See that one guy shooting his uh, s'more? Get him. I don't see anyone else. Now I do, but it's too late. Instead of going for him though, I'm going to go have a look towards B, just see what the AA is doing. And sure enough, he's sitting on an island. Very, very still... Uh, movement from the AA, which makes for an easy JM. And that's 50 damage on him, and he can't move for like 10 seconds, so... He's gonna line up the second JDAM, not even gonna take a risk there. And there you go. 
And there's guys in the chat raging on chemtrails. Um, yeah, un unfortunate. It sucks to it sucks to verse a good wingman in a, a decent attack jet pilot. That rib boat is doing some decent damage. That, that actually sounds like... If you use war tapes audio, or I think any audio settings you can do this, but you can kind of hear by the tone of the damage that how much it's doing. So that deep, like, donk kind of hit. It actually sounded like an AA there for a second, but it wasn't. I always check towards where the AA is when I strafe B. Just had a quick look there. And honestly, I'm just wasting my time right now. I don't have anything to kill. But there is almost no waste of time in this match, which is a good thing. So we played it pretty well. And you, you know you're doing well on the attack chip when you're always shooting something. Just there's a few moments like right there where I don't know what I'm going for. Anyways, I see a TV coming straight at me from this boat. So I'm going to turn right around. Um, probably going to kill it soon, I think. You'd hope that I would. Maybe I didn't see the TV when I was playing this game, but that, that could be a mistake right there. You need to be watching out. That boat shot a TV at me, and I was going to point out a few mistakes and good things I do, and that would definitely be a mistake. Now, I've, I must have seen it now. If I haven't seen it now, I'm blind. Yeah, here we go. So that is the boat we want to go to. He shot two TVs, so he's probably reloading one. Oh, no, he's got one there. And that was very close. That could have been death for me. Always want to focus those boats that shoot TVs. Just boats in general. Because if you leave a good player alive in a boat, you saw it happen on my stream the other day. There was a guy who just kept on spawning the attack boat. I killed him way more than he killed me. But he just spawns in, launches a TV and kills me. It's that easy. And especially in 2021, these days on Battlefield uh, 4, people are very good at the game now. So, you know, TVs are a threat. They're a real threat. And um, we actually hit a 36 damage shade down, which is kind of not that good. But luckily this guy sits dead still, so this one's going to be a 50. I don't really go head on with the AA, especially on 57 health, it's just not worth it. I'd rather get a massive advantage and then go fight him when I'm really, really confident. Because you can see, even on that amount of health, he almost takes half of it off, so... Hit both JDAMs, it really pays off there. And you can see that boat shooting another TV. We need to take care of it, we can't let him sit there and shoot TVs. So since I'm on 35 health and I could easily get killed by the base AA, Especially because I'm spotted right now. I'd rather drop a JDAM to start out that fight. And then come finish him off with the cannons. Just little things like that. And as you can see, I'm shooting at the front of the rib boat there. Getting him out. The, the gunner out of the rib boat straight away. But just little things like that where you, you could go in for a head first strafe. And try to, you know, wing it. And see if it works. But it's much safer to just to drop a JDAM. Open the fight out with 50 damage. And then go from there. Now I'm just cleaning up the guys that are on the edge of D. Some average cannon name there, didn't go that well. The cannons are really something you just have to get used to. Usually I find on my good days I can kill them with the first little burst, and that's how you know you're getting accurate with them. You shouldn't need much more than a little burst of cannons. I'm gonna go help out chemtrails, he's in a 2v1 here, so take down a stealth jet. That jet stalls out right in front of me, and this is just some beautiful like bait and switch action right here. Chemtrails basically baits him up towards him, and I take the easy kill. And we got both the jets down again, which is good. Another little tip with uh, killing jets in this game as well is, when I'm playing solo especially, I'll try to kill the attack jet about a minute after I kill the stealth jet. And what that does is it basically makes it so the spawns are staggered, so they never have both jets up at once. So instead of having a potential 2v1, I pretty much make myself have a series of 1v1s. Obviously, the, the spawn timings can get fucked up if one of the jets lives for too long in a dogfight. But against most pilots, I can keep that kind of rough, like, one minute apart spawn timing. And that really, really helps me out. A lot of people don't do this, and there's so many things you can do in Battlefield 4, man. Uh, I mean, you can do it in Battlefield 5, but with two jets and, like, that, that kind of control variable every single match, you can kind of just learn to do that, and it's almost second nature for me now. And anyways, we just cross over the 50 kill streak mark, and there are many more kills to come. And in my opinion, this is where the game starts to get really good. My aim starts to warm up a bit, because right now, you know, it, it's good. We're doing quite well. But when you see this next half of the match, if you guys are still around, it, it gets really, really juicy. Anyways, uh, I go for the transport heli here, because the boat was just too close to the base for me to risk it. I'd rather just let him get past that island, and then that's when I usually go for them. There are obviously ways that you can use the, the actual carrier itself to dodge um, dodge the AA on it. So the carrier has a stationary AA, if you guys don't know. If you get spotted near it, 
you're going to get like lasered by the stationary AA and it's automatic as well. So it's basically like an aimbot. And I use that a lot to my advantage against stealth jets. I bring them to my AA and then spot them up. But they can use it against you too. Like the enemy can just spot you and then the AA will take care of you. But you can actually use the boat to dodge the AA. So like if you fly on certain angles, you'll learn it. And it's pretty cool. You can like base rate the enemy really effectively. However, on the server I used to play on for the longest time, base rate wasn't legal. I think it's legal on this server, I'm not sure, but I don't really do it too much. Anyways, this game is close enough to where the enemy isn't actually getting base rate, which is good, and man, that is just so satisfying right there. Lasering a, a little jet ski with the cannons, totally overkill, and I don't know how a little, you know, commercial jet ski survives that many 30mm gal cannons. I mean, I'm sure they're not the GAU-8, like the A-10, but that's what they call them in this game, and it's all the same. Also, let me know in the comments, I want to ask this, um, do you guys care about, like, all the weapons being the same on all the vehicles, like in Battlefield 4? Or would you prefer, like, Battlefield 5, where it's more realistic, and let's say the A-10 has a GAU-8 cannon, but this, this cannon on this jet wouldn't be as powerful in real life? Because in, in Battlefield 4, it's assumed that every single attack jet has the same cannon, and the A-10 cannon is one of one, not every jet has that. Anyways, I see some guys doing the bloody easter egg. Get off that windmill. I'm not going to let you do that. And I just I just know that since Jack Frags made that video, I'm mean, going to shout out Jack Frags. He's got me a lot of free kills. Because I always, always check that windmill and just get the free kills on there. That's how I aim the cannons as well, by the way, guys. I just give it little bursts, little taps, and usually does really well. It just It's just nice to get your aim on first, and then once it's on, hold it down. But until then, I just go tap, 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 and then hold it. Anyways, we've got a boat here. Should be light work for the um for the big attack jet. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Anyways, now I've spotted another attack boat. I, and I always just like getting the attack boats out of the way. You know, it's pretty easy kills. Pretty satisfying with the JDAMs. I play this game for fun, not necessarily the maximum KPM at this point. If I really wanted that, maybe the Hydra Rockets are a better option, but... I just think JDAMs are so much more fun to use, and it gives you the option to use your cannons a lot more, which is one of the things I find really, really satisfying in this game, and a lot of Hydro Rocket users will never really develop their cannon name as well as a JDAM user, because you just rely on them that much more. Anyways, um, I'm going to be trying to clean those guys up on B. It's just a really hard task for me to do on my own. I can never get them all gone, but I'm just trying to make it easier for my team to cap it, because at the end of the day, I just want my team to have the AA. That's all I care about. Anyways, I noticed this boat has a gunner while it's moving, which means it's at least two people. So it's two easy kills there. It'll just, it must be. And it actually had four people in it total. One of them bailed, but I got three, so that's pretty good. Um, I'm not going to bother dogfighting the attack jet there. Chemtrails will do that. He's a really good wingman like that, and he'll just get rid of all the jets for you, which is good to see. And now, finally, I think this is where my cannon aim just starts to really warm up. And we're going to get the laser out, so... Um, if you guys down there... No point trying to cannon them on that angle. Just drop the J down. Doesn't work, but I would do that play again 10 out of 10 times. It usually would work. And here we see a guy in the water. You know, beam. Easy kill. And the guy on the jet ski. Boom. Easy J down. And we have a boat still. The boat's still up, so it's perfect time. Just go and kill that. And one of the things I want you guys to take note of this game is just... I don't waste much time flying away further than I have to. I basically give myself the perfect amount of time for each kill. No point flying to the skybox every time. Just take quick paths between each kill and you'll get a lot higher kills per minute, which is what it's what it's about really in the jets. Uh, if I was to take one stat and say that this one is the one that matters, it's KPM for the jets because score per minute can be manipulated by shooting down more planes, you know, making sure you destroy every vehicle even though the people are, have left the vehicle. Like that kind of stuff can be manipulated. Um, KPM cannot be. It's just how many kills you're getting. So obviously KPM and I'd say like vehicles destroyed per match is pretty important in the attack jet. Anyway, speaking about vehicles destroyed, we have another attack boat here and that is just light work for the jet. And I see another guy moving in, swimming in the water. Not sure if I'm going to go for him. I think I usually would, but for some reason I just... I don't know, I go for the guys in the tower. I don't know if I got a, a clue onto that by my squad mate or something, but... Yeah, it's a weird, weird little trajectory to take. Anyways, I was going to go help out Kem with that tranny, but he managed to kill it in one pass, which is good. And I don't know what happened to my cannons there, but I get one kill, so it's all good. 
As you can see, the Easter egg is starting to come through now, and this time, because everyone commented on my previous video, like I can't believe you didn't you didn't watch the Easter egg. Like I just I just saw the the shark pop up in rear cam for a second. I'm like, eh, big fish, keep going, and uh, yeah, that's kind of how we treat it. But just because I know people like the Easter egg. I wanted to watch it, but it's just wasting too much time, so I'll get right back on the farm for a bit more. I don't want to wait around for the bloody shark to pop out the water, so... Find a couple kills here, we're just going to get those. Have another look at the shark. Still not there yet. So we're going to get another kill here. Just spot the guy down here. Gun him down. And now I'm just like, okay, whatever. I'm getting locked. I've got an ECM cooldown to wait for. May as well watch the shark. So when that, that glowy thing pops down, you know the shark's about to come in, so... Anyways, this is my live reaction to the shark. Come on, you stupid fish. I got people to kill. Hey! hey. What's going on, mate? <laughs> <laughs> I got people to kill. I can't be waiting for that. Do you want a ticket? It's an easy 100 bomb. So yes, you skimmer is right. It was an easy 100 bomb, and as you can see, I was not very phased by the big shark. It just... I don't know. Give me a new Battlefield game. I want new Easter eggs. I've seen the bloody shark in, like, other maps and everything. It's... It's cool, but... You know, it is what it is. I'm not... I'm not too fast. So, we're gonna continue doing what we're doing best here, which is not spawning in big sharks, but it's actually just killing the entire enemy team. So... Killed both boats just recently, so we got that all cleared out. Now it's time to, you know, keep an eye on A for that boat to pop up, maybe. But aside from that, it's basically infantry that need to be killed right now, so... A couple guys down there. Try to get them both, and... I pretty much timed that JNAM perfectly. The, the, the aimer was right on the guy, but because he was on a higher elevation, it's not actually going to hit. You'd have to aim further past him for that to hit. So, unfortunately, it didn't really work that well. And right there is why I run stealth coding. Um, basically, I flew away from the Igla, I didn't even have to ECM or anything, and just because it takes a bit longer for him to lock it up, I get to fly away from it and I don't actually get hit, so it's quite useful to have that. But right there, it's not a Igla anymore, that's a Stinger, so I'm just gonna, just gonna fly away from that one, use ECM, it's all good. I'm trying to spot up the attack jet there for chemtrails, because he's flying that big J20, you don't really want the attack jet to get a good lineup on him. If it does, then it can kill them one pass pretty easily. And I actually have no problem against the J20, really. It's just the F-35, which is hard to kill. And there's a nice little three-piece there. And this is where we really start to, you know, get in on the lasers when it comes to killing these infantry. So, guy right there, you know, gonna laser him. Try to drop a JM on the next one. And I just don't know what's happening with some of these JDAMs, because that was right on the guy. And it didn't kill him at all. Oh well, it's how it is sometimes, and we are closing on that 100 bomb, which is a really rare occurrence for even, like, you know, pretty vetted attack jet pilots such as myself. It's pretty hard for me to do. This is a 1,000 ticket server, mind you, so it's not the default um, 800 ticket servers, but we don't even have them anymore. And, you know, 4 KPM is 4 KPM. I think it's 4.4 KPM or something like that. Pretty big match anyway. And... I'm pretty sure I get 100 bomb on 800 tickets. It, in the right situation, you can definitely get it. Just on this server, we don't we don't even have 800 ticket servers anymore. So basically, all my records are relative to a thousand tickets because that's what I'm used to. And I don't know why they they chose 800 in the first place. Like, isn't a thousand just a nicer round number for it? Oh well, gonna go and uh, try to gun that guy. Sometimes the guns just don't go where you need them to go, and the JDM comes in then. But you, you notice that even if my aim is directly on the guy. Just the, the guns have like a left-right sway depending on your momentum of your jet and you do have to take account for that and sometimes I just forget to do that because in Battlefield 5 there is much less of that. It pretty much goes exactly where you point it but the guns are also less accurate in, the get, in that game. So and another weird thing I want to ask is um, do you guys prefer the guns in Battlefield 4 where it's extremely accurate but it's harder to aim or Battlefield 5 where it's very very high spread so it's easy to hit shots but you don't get as much out of it. For me, it's a no-brainer. It's Battlefield 4 for me, because if you got really, really good at the attack jet, you can basically make it into an AEK. Like, if you got that good, you could track infantry, like, perfectly. And I'm sure that, that skill level is achievable. Not that I've seen anyone do it, but just knowing that you could develop that in time is really, really cool. So that's why I like Battlefield 4 a lot more. Anyways, my previous record for 1,000 tickets was, I believe, 107, so... I'm just making sure that I get past 107 kills and 
It's just cursed right now. Like, that guy right there, he tanks some bloody A10 bullets, and then he tanks the JDAM. Well, my JDAM didn't drop or something. I don't know. It doesn't matter, though. We're getting the lasers out anyway, and we're going to be killing all these guys on B just to finish out the game. 25 tickets left. Pressure's on for me to get my, uh, my personal record, but I'm kind of relaxed. I've been here before. You know, I've done a few hundred bombs since the first one. It took me years to hit a 100 bomb with a thousand tickets for some reason. I was just really, really unlucky. I've had five KPM games where it wouldn't go to 100 just because the game gets rolled too quickly. People always stack on me, all that kind of stuff. But finally, we beat our 107 record there. And it is a good feeling, let me tell you that. Anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. And if you made it this late, I mean, YouTube is going to recommend my content to you regardless. So you may as well subscribe. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.